It is impossible to predict what questions you'll be asked in the IELTS speaking test. But one thing is certain, studying for common IELTS topics is a really great way to prepare. There are various topics that appear in the IELTS speaking test regularly, and so you can be confident that if you study vocabulary for these, your time will be well spent. Those common topics include work, study, hobbies, music, sports, technology, family and friends, and many more. One of the topics that frequently arises is that of hometown. Yes, it can appear in part one of the speaking test, but it could also appear in part two, requiring you to describe your hometown in some detail. Today I'm going to show you how to answer this question. I will give you some useful vocabulary and grammatical structures to help you talk about the place you come from. In part one of the IELTS speaking test, you may be asked a simple question like, where is your hometown? Or do you like your hometown? There may also be slightly more challenging questions such as, how has your hometown changed since you were a child? However, for part two, you will be given a cue card. This card will have instructions on it that tell you roughly what you should say. It will begin with describe, and in this case it will say describe your hometown. It may look like this. Describe your hometown. You should say where it is located, what people do there, what the climate is like, and explain how you feel about your hometown. Please note that there are many possible cue cards related to the topic of hometown, and this is just one possibility. You may also be asked to describe related things or ideas, like describe a village near your hometown, describe a product from your hometown, and so on. In any case, it is important that you pay attention to the exact instructions on the cue card so that you don't just talk generally about the topic of hometown. Every cue card is different. Some are subtly different, while others contain more obvious differences. It is important that you read them carefully before giving your answer, or else you may make a big mistake. The cue card that we're looking at today is pretty simple. Let's see it again. There is nothing here that is misleading, and I think that everyone should be able to answer this question because we all have a hometown. Anyway, it is worth thinking about what you must do. You must state the name of your hometown, say where it is, talk about the people, mention the climate, say how you feel about it. Certainly you can add more to that list, but you don't really have to. You should try to go through the points on the cue card and talk about them in order, because this will give you a good framework for speaking. When you are given the cue card, you will have just one minute to think about it before you're expected to talk for one to two minutes about it. This is where an easy question turns into a difficult one. Even describing your hometown can be challenging under such high pressure circumstances. So what should you do? First of all, it's a good idea to make notes. Remember that you shouldn't write too much, no matter how quickly you think you can write. In just one minute, you won't succeed in writing many words. As such, it's better to use that time to note down some vocabulary or ideas that you want to remember for later. You can then refer to the cue card and your note paper during your one to two minutes of talking time. For the question we're looking at today, I would write the following notes. As you can see, I've not written much. I did not, for example, waste time writing the name of my hometown, because I'm not likely to forget that. I wrote down its rough location and a few other key ideas I would like to mention in my speech. There are no full sentences or even long phrases here, as it would not help me much to write them down. Describing your hometown is not the most difficult IELTS topic. In fact, when most candidates encounter this question, they feel a great sense of relief. They've probably practiced it many times in preparation for their speaking test, so it feels familiar to them. Most IELTS candidates would be comfortable talking about their hometown at a basic level, and I think many of them could easily get a band 6 on just this topic. But what about if you want to score a band 7 or 8? 
If you have followed my articles, emails and videos in recent years, you will know that I really do not recommend learning long lists of vocabulary to dazzle the examiners. It just doesn't work. Yes, I know that many lazy IELTS teachers tell you to use fancy language, but they are idiots and the examiners are smart. I read a sample answer to this question from an Indian IELTS teacher who used the phrase variegated plethora of tourist attractions. Nobody really talks like that. It sounds ridiculous. Instead, you need to find words and phrases that are appropriate. This will, of course, depend on your actual hometown and its location. If I just teach you about mine, it might not be very helpful for you. But I can give you one really good suggestion. Use Wikipedia. Okay, this may sound strange, but take a look at the screenshot here. It's for my hometown of St Andrews in Scotland. Using Wikipedia in English is great for finding words and ideas, but it's especially useful because you can see how the words are actually used. If we look at the section on weather and climate, we can see some even more useful language. It can be really difficult to talk about this beyond it's cold or it's always sunny. And so learning some more specific phrases is helpful. Here we can see two sections that provide us with some good phrases. St Andrews has a temperate maritime climate which is relatively mild despite its northerly latitude. However, the town is subject to strong winds. Nighttime frosts are common, however snowfall is rare. Sunshine averaging in excess of 1,500 hours a year is amongst the highest for Scotland and comparable to inland parts of southern England. Obviously, when doing an IELTS speaking test, you're not expected to know statistics about climate. However, some of the language here is quite useful. Words like temperate, mild, northerly are ones that move beyond the basic IELTS vocabulary required for band 6. Those phrases is subject to, are common, uh, these are also very helpful. Uh, when describing something, you may want to say uh, it is amongst the highest or lowest, and when comparing one place to another, you may say uh, blank is comparable to blank. Before I give you my sample answer, I'd like to give a few more pieces of advice. First of all, uh, make sure to speak for more than one minute. This may sound very obvious, but it's hard to tell when you're in an exam. You should practice this at home so that you know what one minute feels like. Don't speak too quickly or you will finish saying everything within one minute. Instead, pace yourself by breathing slowly and staying calm. Nervousness is one of the biggest problems and it will make you speak too quickly. Remember that you're having a conversation with the examiner. Even though at this point he or she will just be listening to you, it is not a formal speech. So try not to sound too formal. And avoid cliches such as, today I'm going to talk about, these don't sound very natural or normal. Finally, don't worry too much about the mistakes you make. If you say something that you know is wrong, you may correct it, but it's easy to fall into the trap of repeatedly correcting yourself. This is not good. Small mistakes may even be ignored by the examiner, so just keep talking. If you pause to correct every little error, you will lose points for fluency. Here is my sample answer for the above cue card. My hometown is a place called St Andrews. It's located in the northeast of Fife, a county in Scotland. St Andrews is a very old place with some buildings that date back hundreds of years, including a castle and a cathedral. Nowadays, it is mostly famous for its golf courses and an excellent university. People in St Andrews engage in various occupations, but as it's a university town, there are lots of students here. Other people may work in shops or other businesses, and some commute to nearby cities like Dundee. However, there is no major industry in St Andrews and no factories there. There are a lot of tourists though, so I suppose at least some people must work within the tourist industry. In terms of climate, St Andrews is mild but rainy. Like most of Scotland, there are not many sunny days and it often is, it is grey. 
overcast and there is a light rain. However, it seldom gets below freezing and there is rarely any snow. I have not lived in my hometown for many years because I moved away after university, but I still have a certain fondness for it. I go back once every year or two and I enjoy walking around the streets or strolling along the beach. It is a very pleasant place for walking and being among the old buildings brings back fond memories. You will notice that I haven't used any fancy vocabulary in this speech. As I have said before, I don't think that it's really worthwhile. This is a test of your speaking ability and you should go into it open-minded with the intention of just giving an honest description of whatever is on the cue card. You don't need to say anything particularly special, just avoid mistakes with grammar and vocabulary. If you want to read the full transcript of this video, you can find it on my website www.tedielts.com. You can also find us on social media.